Hello everyone. Once again, it's Emma here at Function Point in Vancouver. Thanks so much for joining in today. Uh, Mark is going to be doing a presentation today all about alerts and permissions in your FP system. So I am recording today's session as well and I will be answering questions as we go. So feel free to type those in as Mark takes us through this. I just want to take us through a couple of screens to just go over the agenda for today's session. So today we're going to be getting everybody really clear on the difference between alerts and permissions. Mark's going to take us through how to edit a current alert set in your system and how to make one from scratch and then do the same for permissions and permission sets. Uh, Mark, do I have you there with me? Yes, you do. Can you hear me okay? Oh, no, you are very quiet. Very quiet. I oh, there we go. I, there we go. I, I think it's because I just uh, had... Uh, taking myself off mute and it, uh, even I sounded quiet. To <laughs> well, I didn't mean to surprise you there with our briefer agenda than usual. Um, but thanks for doing this with us today. We've got looks to have some really good attendees. Um, and I will pass over the presentation duties to you. Was there anything that I missed in that agenda that you think you're going to be covering today? No, I think I should do it. Sweet. Okay, hang tight. Let me make you presenter. And uh, we I don't see your screen yet, but I can let you know when I do. Okay, you should be able to see my screen pretty shortly. Oh yeah, there we go. Fantastic. Okay, great. Awesome. Now, Mark, how long do you think we're going to go today? Uh, you know, that's a good question. No, I mean, the, you know, this isn't uh, a really complicated topic. Uh, right. I guess I guess it depends on on the questions. I mean, I, I think thirty to forty five minutes is is more than enough to review these things. And to be honest with you, I probably only have about. 20 minutes of actual content myself, and the rest cool. is going to be uh, related to questions. And uh, I'll, I'll probably, I mean, you know, last week I was checking in, checking in with you like every five minutes, <laughs> and there was, there was only a couple of questions that came in, so I'm no, probably but I, a, little, a little it, bit less this time. It was beautiful, though. I felt very attended to, so, you know, I'm don't sure. be discouraged from checking in. No problem. Uh, well, thanks everyone for, for joining in today. You know, as I mentioned, we're going to be reviewing alerts and permission sets, and uh, well, not just sets, but just alerts and permissions in general, and, and how to how to work with them and how to operate them. Uh, and um, you know, I'm going to be really honest to all of our uh, webinar attendees today that I haven't. Ha it's been a bit of a whirlwind week, and I haven't had as much time to um, prep for this webinar as I have for all the ones I've done previously. So I'm a little bit I'm a little bit nervous as far as you know jumping around and not seeming as organized as I typically do. So if that's the case, uh, you know, I apologize in advance. But I'm. I'm Again, it's not, it's not too complicated of a topic, so I don't, I don't think it should be a problem. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to start off with just reviewing what permissions and what alerts are, and I'm going to show you where to handle them individually, and then we're going to get into a more detailed view of them in the sets option, and I'm going to explain why I recommend and prefer for everybody to, ma to be managing alerts and permissions and sets instead of individually. Um, so as, as always, if anybody does have any questions, please feel free to type them into the GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar question box. Uh, Emma will probably answer a lot of them via text, uh, but anyone that does need to be uh, reviewed on screen or if you request to be viewed on screen, um, then in one of my many check-ins with Emma, she'll let me know and then I'll go ahead and show those. Anything that we're not able to answer today, whether it be the complexity of the question or um, uh, you know, relating to a different topic, of course, we will follow up uh, with you um, at a later time and, and provide some answers for you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's, without further ado, let's, let's go ahead. Let's jump in. Um, so right now we are, of course, looking at a demonstration version uh, of my system. And uh, a uh, very uh, topical point would be that you may not see all the different modules in your version depending on your permissions uh, slash access levels that you have in your version. And the first thing that we're going to be reviewing is the permissions. And there's two areas that you can access permissions in Function Point. They're both under rate and staff management. And the first area is individually. If I were to navigate to the staff, staff rates, and permissions area, what this essentially is is a list of staff. And this is a list of users, not contacts. So I'm not doing a contact find for all the people that live under our company. We are looking at an admin list of staff. And I'm seeing all my staff here. And then on the far right, there are some buttons. This is manage staff details, rates, and permissions. So if I were to select permissions here for one of these individuals, it's going to bring me into the 
managed staff permissions area specifically for this individual. And for this individual, I'm able to establish their permissions. And I'm able to see each of the modules that they can and cannot view. And if they can view a module, what can they do and what can they not do within that module? And some of these are significantly larger than others. You'll also notice that it's showing me the permission set. You know, what set do this, does this individual belong to? And I can change that right from here and put them into different sets. I'm going to touch on sets in more detail in just a second. But as far as you know, operating these permissions, view is like a master category. You know, if I take away the ability for somebody to review as to view estimates, that's taking away a lot of ability. It's it's going to erase estimates from the main nav bar, and they're not even going to see it there. And everything else is going to shift to the left. So if you know a basic user for your agency is just being able to see maybe their tasks and track time, and you turned off everything else using the view modules option taking off everything else but those, then you would see tasks and jobs at the far left and everything else would just be a blank black bar. Um, so everything shifts to the left as you, as you take out the option to, to see those modules. A really important thing I want to mention is that while you are playing around with permissions, you're going to want to make sure that you don't accidentally erase your own permissions. If I were to look at myself, let's say I was Kevin here, and I were to say, you know, take out the ability to access any of the admin areas, which is a, a large permission area, then as soon as I move away from this page, I'm never going to be able to get back there. And I'm going to have to ask somebody else who has access to go in and, and set up my own permissions. You'd be surprised how often that happens. I'd say once every couple months, maybe, you know, yeah, once every two months or so, we'll get a client contact us and says, I've, I've erased all the permissions for all the users, including myself. We no longer have the ability to log back in. Can you please um, help us out? And we just go and flick a switch, and then you're able to go back in. But just keep that in mind. Now, as far as the permission set, and as I mentioned, I highly recommend you manage the permissions in sets as opposed to one by one. It allows you to have some consistency between the access levels and your users. And you'll notice that there's a button here that says Manage Permission Sets. Now, I can get it from here, but typically what you would do is you'd go into the admin section, and you go into Rate and Staff Management and select Permission Sets. Now, this is a three-step process. So the first step, let's, let's talk about editing a permission set first, and then we'll talk about creating one. So as far as editing a permission set, what I would do is I'd select a permission set. I have one here called All But AE. Now, I created this for my demo version because I wanted a lot of individuals to have full access, but I did not want them to be selectable as an account executive when creating estimates and things like that. So all but AE is what I called the set. So I chose the set and I selected it. What that is then doing is showing me the name of the set. Now, if I want to rename it here, I can. But in step two, it's showing me these are their permissions. Now, there's an item here. You'll notice it says for legacy. It's called proofs. Don't get too excited. It's uh, an old integration with a tool we had a long time ago. It's relevant in my demo system, but um, not, in, not in our actual live client system. So uh, ignore that one item. But everything here is selected except for AE, the ability for staff to appear as an account executive. This is a set that I created for my, for my own demo system use. That is what the permission set is. Now on the right, I can then see the staff that belong to that permission set. So these are all the individuals that have those access levels but cannot be selected as an account executive. So it's pretty much everyone. Now if I decide, well, you know, I want Daniel here to be in this permission set as well, then I'll simply click on the checkbox and I decide I want Emma to be taken out of this set, then I would deselect her and submit. Now I've accomplished two things right there. I've given Daniel a new permission set but I've also taken Emma out of her permission set. I've, er I've essentially erased her permissions. So what do I want Emma's permissions to be? Well, I'm deciding, you know what, let's make her a traffic manager. When I look at the traffic manager set, I'm able to see, you know, this is the permission structure. So there's some areas like links and 
salary wage info that's been turned off. There's full access everywhere else. There are some reports that have been turned off. And the way that I can see that is on the far right, there's a list of check boxes. A check means every single thing in here is, is selected and everything is available. A line means that some things are available and some are not. And a blank box means that no options are available. So if I see a line under reports and data export, I might want to know, well, what can a traffic manager see? And I can look in here and see all the reports that a traffic manager has access to, and then I find a whole bunch at the bottom that, that aren't available. So if I look at this and I say, okay, well, this looks like a good permission set for Emma, I would simply choose the contact for the staff, hit submit, they now have that permission level. Now, as far as, in fact, I should probably check in. Emma, any questions at all at this time? Oh, hey, Mark. Uh, thanks for checking in. No, we don't have any questions just yet, but everyone do be encouraged to ask. Okay. So let's say here that, um, you know, I decided, you know what, I want uh, Jeremy here to have a, a, a different setup, and I'm not really finding it. You know, when I look at, you know, these different permission sets, I'm not really finding one in there that fits with him. So maybe I want to create a new one. I actually want to create it for Jeremy and a few others. So what I would do is I would select Create New as my option. Click Select. We're going to touch on this in just a bit. Uh, but I'm going to create a new set. Click Select. And everything is blanked out. So this is now a blank slate. I'm going to call this my new set. And let's say my new set is going to be everything except for salary and wage info. I don't need that. Take that out of there. And uh, you know maybe there's also some things within reports. So maybe there's a few reports. You know when I look down here, um, you know I'm let's say looking at profit loss, and uh, you know that's a report they wouldn't really even be able to see too much of the information anyways because I've taken out salary and wage info. Salary and wage info referring to cost. Profit loss is incalculate incalculable. <laughs> mouthful um, without without cost information. So they wouldn't be able to see the data within the report anyways, but I'm just going to take it out altogether. So I'm going through and I'm selecting what I want them to see and not see, and then choosing who do I want to apply this to this permission set. We'll say Jeremy and we'll say uh, Jane here, and submit that. They're now a part of that permission set. You also have the ability to copy the sets, if you want to copy the sets as well, and then selecting this button is going to navigate you to the contact details page of that specific person. So it's important to have everybody under a set. I highly recommend that because otherwise you're just not going to have consistency. If you if you go into the individual permission sets on their details pages and you just make a bunch of edits and, and kind of do it manually from there, you're going to have people with different permission sets. There's a lot of options here. It's hard to be consistent if you're not managing them in sets. So this is the page that you want to use. And you just want to make sure that you've selected something for everybody, that everybody belongs in a set. And when you want to see, well, who belongs in a set, you know, who belongs to the studio staff set, probably nobody. You know, I selected, I'm not seeing anyone here that belongs in this set, so I don't really need it. I'm going to get rid of it. I might say, okay, well, you know, who belongs in you know, this traffic manager set? And I've decided, you know what, Emma here can actually be in a different one. So again, I deselect her, choose the set I want, put her in it, and then go back and delete this set. So you don't want to, you don't need to have an ever-expanding list of these. You can, you can keep it pretty streamlined if you if you want to delete the ones that you're not using. It's pretty easy to tell if you're using it or not simply by is anyone selected when I choose that set. And you might want to look at the permissions and see if you can consolidate and better organize. Um, so that you don't have, you know, if you have 20 staff and you don't want to have 20, you know, you don't want to have 18 permission sets. It's not, um, it's not efficient. You know, have a couple. And I mean, it, it, if you're wondering what are some things that I should watch out for, what are common things that I, I don't want to give access to, let me show you some some common items. Um, I'm going to choose this all but AE here one as an just to start off with. Um, let me show you some common things to look out for. One, salary and wage info. This is related to anything about cost. So this allows to see cost information, the hourly wage slash cost data, and also access a payroll report. This is one where typically it's turned off 
for almost all staff. Another common thing that you might want to watch out for is under the admin section, and I recommend just going through administrator and looking at all of this. These bottom two are the most important ones that you're going to want to look for information that's sensitive. And when you're going through, we're going to find things like rates. So we're going to find show actual, show estimated, show invoice, show rates. Rates equal billable rates, not cost rates. So if you have rates that are different for different staff people or Maybe you don't want you know, the studio staff to know what the billing rate is for senior management, then I would take out rates. And in show estimated and show actual, these are the dollar values that equal the total estimated and actual amounts. So if somebody, you know, if there's you know, 100 hours coming from 20 different staff all equaling up to a dollar amount, it's going to be pretty hard for somebody to figure out the individual rates if you have this one turned off. So I wouldn't worry about it. But if you don't want people to see how much in, how much get invoiced to clients, turn the invoices off. If you don't want somebody to see how much gets estimated or the value of the work, turn these off. You know, these are all related to dollar amounts. But it's this admin item that you're going to want to review in detail. Everything else, for the most part, I'd recommend giving it to your staff unless you are concerned about things like being able to delete other people's tasks or delete tasks in general. It's all pretty straightforward, though. You know, if you go through these, you're going to find things like being able to, uh, you know, approve estimates or you know, update estimates and change them. These are things that you might not want some staff to go for, but for the most part, it's these two bottom ones you're going to want to look out at, look after, make sure that you have the right thing selected there. The next thing I'm going to touch on is portal, um, is uh, portal permissions or portal set. And what that means, if you are using the FP portal and you have your clients logging into the system, you can give your clients permission level two. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I'm sure that there's people on the call here that aren't using the portal this isn't really relevant to. I want to get to alerts, so I'm just going to touch on this really quickly. But if you are using the, the client portal, then the, the clients that are logging into the portal are going to have their own permissions. And if I'm creating a new set, and, this, and it's related to portal users, when I select this, you're going to notice that the, the permissions are going to get really trimmed down here because there aren't a lot of things that the clients can do in the portal. So I might, you know, maybe select everything, but, you know, I decide I don't want, I don't want the people that I put in this set to be able to approve estimates. So I'm just going to take that out as well. And maybe I don't want them to be able to delete files. So I'm going to take that out too. And I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna say I'm gonna call this let's call it standard clients, and I'm gonna save that. That's now a set. That set now exists, and I can choose. Okay, well, who do I want to apply this to? Well, I have all of my all of my clients here, and this could be a, an incredibly long list. So I can manage this here. I can say, well, you know, for my client North Shore North Shore Auto Group, I want Paul to be under this set. I also want for my clients Great Atlantic Insurance, I want Jason and Phil to be under this set. And I can manage this all right from here. But again, this can be a long list. So if you want to, just like with staff, you can navigate to their details page and change them. So, you know, Paul here, if I were to navigate to his contact details page, whether I'm doing a search or just clicking on his name somewhere, for his contact details, I'm going to find his client portal. I'm going to find his access levels, and I'm going to see the sets that are available. And I can set him up there, or I can change them individually. The clients, it's not really as important that you have them all in sets as it is with staff. If you want to just manage it one by one, that's fine. But doing it in sets is just going to save you time. You'll also notice that there's a subscriptions item. And the concept of this is subscribing to alerts. And that is a good transition into moving from permissions into alerts. Uh, and I just want to check in any questions before we do that. 
Uh, no, no questions, but something I just wanted to mention, and you were maybe going to mention it, and I certainly don't want to um, interrupt you here, but uh, something uh, something that I find happens quite often is that uh, clients won't use permission sets, and then I'll get a call saying, hey, Emma, can you give my new staff member the same permissions as this staff member? And uh, that can be a bit of a pain in the neck for ourselves or for the client because that person isn't on a permission set. So the permission sets are really, really valuable for uh, uh, you never know, six months down the road, you may want to give someone else that permission set that you sort of picked and chose and didn't give a set name to, uh, and it can just make life a lot easier if that was in a set. Hopefully that made sense. It might be something you encounter as well, Mark. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, that's a really good point. And, I mean, let's say that you don't have time. Let's say you're, you're, you're short on time. You want, you want to just quickly throw together a permission set for a new staff person. And I know I was talking about the concept of um, – you know, not creating a whole bunch of sets, and, and I still think that's the case, but let's use an example using what you just said, Emma. So you have a new staff person, and you want to create a permission set for them, and you're not really sure what you want to call it right now, but you want it as a set in case you want to rename it later or use it again. So a new person comes on, you want them to have the same set. A quick way of doing this would just be, you know, so let's say Leonardo here is a staff person, I want to give him a set but I'll, I want to have it be available again for future use. So I'm just going to call this Leo's set. Let's call it Leo's set, and I'll select everything, and I've created that set. Let's take uh, Leo's set, or did I not submit that? You know what? Actually, my apologies. I think I didn't submit it. Leo's set. I hit select there as opposed to submit. My apologies. So I'm, I'm creating new Leo set submitting that set. It didn't have anything, so let's give it some stuff, select everything here, and then apply it to Leo. There we go. So I just, instead of going to his staff details page and setting up all of his permissions, I just did it in this page. I did it in the permission sets page, and that means that later on, you know, I just hired uh, Eric here, so I'm going to you know, load up the set, load up Leo's set, I want Eric to have the same permissions as Leo. So I'm going to load up Leo's set. I'm going to choose Eric and add him in there, and then we're done. We're moving on. You know, a week later, I hire Travis here. I put him in there too. So it's it, doing it in sets is just going to make your life a lot easier. So I man, I recommend doing everything from this particular page. Thank you, Emma, for for mentioning that. It's a really good point. No, no, thank you, Mark, for going through that. That's great. Great, awesome. So if we were to look at alerts, alerts. The use of, I mean, how you set them up works almost exactly the same as permissions do. Now, if we go into alert subscription sets, just like before, I can manage this on a contact-by-contact -contact basis. The only thing that's a little bit different, and it's a, I suppose you could say it's a bit of an inconsistency, I do apologize for that, is that if you wanted to manage the alerts for your staff individually one by one, you need to go to their contact details page. So we need to go to the contact details page where you'll find their alert subscriptions. It's not handled on the back end, it's handled at their, their contact level. But this works the, you know, the exact same way. I'm looking at the alerts, you know, manage alert list, and I, again, I recommend managing this in the set. So alert subscription sets. And let's create a new one, because I don't think, oh, I do have some in here. Let's create a new one. Let's call this, you know, new set. Just keep it simple. That's now created. Let's let's give it some stuff. So what we're seeing here is every single alert that the system can send, and then whether we're receiving a system alert and or an email. The email is going to go to whatever email address is tied to the contact. So whatever email address is tied to these people and their contact details, that's where the email is going to go. The alert is going to fill up these items up at the top here. Now, I happen to not allow my system to give me too many, um, but if I did, then I would see a list of alerts there. And actually, that's an example of, of a case where um, I probably should have prepped that and had some in there. So I do apologize about that. Uh, but let, let's take a look at then what we can do with these. So we're seeing each different type of alert. So for example, let's look at tasks. That's fine. That's a really common one. So for tasks, you'll notice the descriptions here are pretty good. You know, if, it, if a new task is assigned, well, I want the system to send me a system alert and send me an email. That's an important thing. But I only want to see that if the task is assigned to me. 
Now let's say that a task is then due, let, let's say it's overdue. I, wanna, I don't want to do due tomorrow or today. I want to just overdue. If the task is overdue, I want the system to send me an email and a system alert, but only if the task is assigned to me or only the task is assigned by me. So if I've assigned somebody else a task and it has become overdue, I want the system to send me a system alert and an email. Now here's a common question I get asked with alerts. It's it's like, well, I'm a project you know, I'm, I'm taking the identity of, a, of someone I'm speaking with now for a second. So I'm a project manager and I want the system to email me anytime something happens with one of my projects that I'm managing. So when you are a project manager in Function Point, you should be a contact on all the jobs that you are managing. So even if an account executive is someone else, so I have an AE and they open up the jobs, that AE opens up the job and maybe the, accounting, the, the, the project manager is assigned later. If I'm assigned as a project manager, I should be a contact on that job. It's really important. A good way to show that really quickly here is if we're looking at a job, I'm probably a contact on this one. Uh, it doesn't matter. Let's let's say uh, I'm actually logged in as Leo here, and I'm a project manager on this job. On the jobs details page, I'd want to manage the job contacts, and then choose. Well, you know, let's say actually, uh, you know, Isabel here is the project manager on this, and maybe it's not me. So it's not me. It's Isabel. She's the project manager on this. I select her and submit. What I've done there is I've made Isabel a contact on the job. Being a contact on the job is going to put it on your dashboard, and it's also going to control a lot of the alerts if you have them set up appropriately. So let's say, for example, you know this new set here was like a you know, project manager set. So this is a PM set, and I know that my project managers need this set. And if Isabel here is a contact on a job, it means she's the project manager for that job. So for example, if a task is completed, I want to be notified about that. But somebody else might be assigning the task. Maybe they assign it to themselves. Maybe somebody else assigned to them. But I want the system to send me a system alert, not an email, just a system alert if I'm a job contact. Because I know that I'm only ever a contact on a job if I'm the project manager. Therefore, if I'm the project manager and I'm a job contact and a task is completed, I want to be alerted about it. So that's how you manage the concept of how can I be notified when things happen that aren't directly tied to me, like tasks being assigned to or by me. It's by making yourself a contact on the job and ensuring that you have an alert set up so that you're notified when things happen when you are a contact on that job. That's a bit of a mouthful there with relation to tasks. Have any questions about that at all? Oh, hey, Mark. Sorry, I was just seeking my mute button there. Um, no, we haven't had questions on that at all yet, but, but well explained. I, something I've noticed, just to chime in for a moment, is that um, I'll hear from clients who are feeling a little, and you may have been planning to touch on this, but feeling a little overwhelmed with especially task-related uh, notifications they're getting, and they may have failed to notice that middle portion there that you've been doing a good job of pointing out where you can be more specific about when you're not getting alerted about every task that gets created, but just those that are assigned to or by you can be a great way to not get overwhelmed with those. Very good point. And that's something that you know maybe should be a bit more clear in the system. But when you see arrows beside things, anywhere in the system, if you see an arrow, if it's pointing to the right, there's more data there. If it's pointing down, that's the extent of it. And that's a common theme you're going to see in the system. It just means that there's more information hiding here, including the descriptions of what these are. So that's a really good point. Um, yeah, so you know, again, what we're doing here is we're going through and we're setting up these alerts. And, and on the topic of alerts or receiving too many, uh, anytime I'm working with a new agency that's just starting up with a system, well, not anytime, but a lot of the time, they'll, people will say, well, you know, I want, I want to have, I want to be alerted when pretty much anything happens. If, if you know, something changes, a status update, if a uh, task due date approaches, anything, I want the system to alert me. And what often happens is, so many alerts are set up that you start to receive so many emails that they become like white noise. If you receive too many, you're not going to look at them. I recommend, especially when you're first starting out, or even if you've been using Function Point for years, make it so that 
you only receive emails, especially emails. System alerts are another thing, but even then, you know, only set up alerts to go to you when something is really important. So that way you know that a function point has pinged you about something, it must be crucial because it hardly ever happens, or maybe it only happens once a day or once a week or maybe even once a month. If you're getting, and honestly, this is anything these days, you know, whether it's emails or alerts and things like that, if you're getting more than a handful a day, you're, you're just not going to look at them. I think about all the newsletters I used to get um, because I was, you know, for a while subscribing to newsletters for all these different organizations that I was interested in, and I started to realize that I just no longer read any of them because I just got so many that it just, honestly, my eyes would just glaze over. I wouldn't even pay attention to them uh, after a while. Uh, and alerts are the same thing. It's much better to have less alerts and add more in when you start to notice things. So if you notice that, hey, things have occurred and I didn't know about it, um, so therefore I must need an alert here. So that, that's a much better situation than, you know what, Function Point has emailed me 100 times this month and I haven't opened a single one of them. That's, that's not a good situation. So less is more, less is better. Start with less, add them as you need them. Now that's a basic overview of the sets. Just like before I mentioned, you can manage them on the contact details page. It's much better to do it with a set though. And everything else that we've reviewed around the sets, around either selecting one and then opening it up, or creating a new one, giving it a name as step two, adding the staff as step three, and saving it as step four. And you'll notice that I've kind of gotten into the habit of you know, going create new, you know, giving it a name, and then either, you know, if, if I think, okay, I'm not sure, I might be working on this for like an hour, and I might be going through these alerts and stuff, you know, every 10 minutes over the next hour, I might look at it for another minute and then hop on a call, you know, I'm going to be spending some time on this. So I'm just going to submit it. This, this alert set exists now. Yes, there weren't any alerts there, but the set exists. So if I navigate away, and I come back to that page, I'm able to find that new set example, load it up, and then continue working on it. You know, choose what I want to receive, and you know, drop down some, some options, and uh, you know, set up some new alerts and so forth, and submit that, and then go back, you know, go away somewhere, come back, continue working on it. And once I've set up all those alerts the way that I want it to, I'm then applying the staff that I think should have this and submitting that alert set. That's, you know, really the basics. Any any questions at all on that this time? Hey, Mark. Uh, yeah, if you could just show for Lindsay um, where the email address is, so like where you can see what email address these alerts are going to come to, if you wouldn't mind just showing where people can find themselves in the system. Oh, yes, good question. So let's say I want to know what email address the system has for me. What I would do is I would do a contact find, and I would say, well, you know, show me myself. So I'm going to type in you know, my name here. I just hit enter with my pinky finger there, and it brought me to this page. I, I oftentimes, when I'm when I'm doing these types of presentations, I, I like, because you, I want you to visually see it, I'll go and I'll hit find contacts. I just kind of hit enter there out of force of habit. But type in my name, hit find contacts, and then that brought me to either a list or depending on your system preferences, if there's only one result of your search, it may bring you directly to the details page of that contact. The point is to get to the details page for yourself. Now, I could have done a company find for function point and then selected my name, or I could do a contact find for my name, or I could use the quick search. I could type in, you know, mark within contacts, and it's going to do that same search as well. Um, so, however you want to get there, you know, get to the contact details page, and that's where you're going to find the email for that contact. It's all about the email that you have on, on the contact details page, and you can see a list of all of the contacts for this company and what their email addresses are, too. Excellent. All of these are actually fake except for mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed that I, that's not my email address, but it's like, oh, that's probably why I don't get emails, fake emails from your demo system here, so that's I think, always exactly, good. Exactly. Believe me, if I, if I had <laughs> your real email on there, you would be 
ready to ready to hurt you yeah yeah well that's something you mentioned earlier and and we haven't had too many people uh mention it yet but it's something that i try to talk about in the webinars i do as well it's just less is more with alerts as far as i'm concerned anyway and i have, have worked with a few clients as you may have as well who just um like you said you know sign up for everything really enthusiastically and then very soon after that are just thinking no thanks way too many yeah, I, I, I hear it all the time, too, so it's definitely something to watch out for. Excellent. Well, um, that, yeah. You know, that's all, all the content I have for today. Um, you know, I noticed uh, when I clicked on the question box that a bunch were coming in, so I guess that was, those were ones that you were, they were probably were pretty simple. You were able to, to hit off there, um, you know, without, without having to show visually. So I thanks, Emma, for, for backing me up in the back end there. <laughs> no problem. I might have you just show one thing, if you wouldn't mind, Mark, since we are doing so well on the time. Um, a couple of people have asked a bit about this. Could you show what I've been recommending? Uh, let me start that sentence again. People have been asking a bit about budget-related alerts. Um, which I know we get asked regularly, and something that I advise, and I, I think you would give the same advice, is that people employ and make use of the dashboard related tiles that can be a nice visual representation of what's going on budget-wise. Now, I hope I'm not throwing you too much of a curveball there, Mark. Um, I know it's a little bit off topic. Um, yeah, you know, uh, that's a, a really good point, and that is something that I do get quite a bit myself, is, is you know, agencies are asking, how can I get an email if something approaches a percentage of budget or goes over budget? And that right now is not a capability that we have. The system's never going to email you about budget information. And, uh, you know, it, it is something that because the amount of requests that we have gone for it, it is something that we will imp implement in the future. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I don't have any kind of estimate for when that might happen, but um, it is a common request. And usually it's pretty straightforward. You know, people want to receive an email if, if a job or task goes over budget, but, some, but sometimes people are asking for more specifics. So somebody would say, well, you know, if a task hits 90% of budget, I want an email, whereas if a job hits 80%, I want an email. So there's, um, you know, a, a interesting kind of filters that people are wanting there. And again, unfortunately, we don't have that capability right now. So as far as seeing budget information, uh, you know, on your dashboard, I'll show some basics and I'll show some, some more advanced stuff. Basics are, you know, your, your tasks and to-dos list. So if I go over budget on something, let's drop in four hours on this task here, the item is going to turn red. So I've gone over budget by an hour, the item has then turned red. If I'm, say, looking at a dashboard that's more related to like a traffic manager, and I want to see, well, show me all the tasks that are assigned to, you know, our project managers here. So I want to see all the tasks assigned to the project managers. I want to sort these by the ones that have gone over budget. Well, it's actually, sorry, let's clear that sort there. There we are. And uh, my apologies, I keep on looking at the wrong column there. This is my lack of prep. There we are. So here is an item where you know I'm seeing all the ones that have gone over budget at the top. So. Here's that task that I just went over by. So I can sort by that. And this is a dashboard that I've created that I've labeled a, a traffic manager view. It's showing me a, a tasks and to-dos panel that has a lot of screen real estate. And because it has a lot of screen real estate, there's a lot of things I can do with it. If I want to see, well, what tasks have gone over budget for my designers, I'm able to select those individuals. And these are all the, you know, there's only one task over budget right now, but there's a bunch that are approaching their budgets. And I can narrow this down. I want to see all the tasks that have gone over budget for, um, you know, my client American Express. So there's the one task for American Express. I want to see everything for Great Atlantic Insurance. So these are all the tasks assigned to my design team for Great Atlantic Insurance. And I have one here that's at 90% of budget. Whereas when I look down below, I have a jobs by company summary. And this is showing me an overview of, of our top five clients that we have jobs open for. If I want a custom selection, actually this is a custom selection, my apologies, I can put in either custom selection, my jobs, or all jobs. Maybe I'll select all jobs here, it's probably going to be the same. So these are, you know, all, you know, these are our top five clients we have the most jobs open for. I'm able to see for Great Atlantic Insurance, we have eight jobs for them that are within the budget. And I have two jobs that are over 80% of budget. 
for Furry Creek, I have two jobs within, and I have one job that is over budget. If I want to know what is that one job that's over budget, I can select this, and it's going to navigate me to that job. A job called Pro Shop Signage, we've gone over budget by 122 bucks, so just by about an hour. Hop back to the dashboard. I'm also able to see a task time summary, and this is showing me that I have 113 open tasks. 35 of them are due in the next seven days, and 18 of them are overdue. Of those 113, 87% totaling 140 tasks, sorry, 104 tasks, are within the budget. 6% totaling seven tasks are within 80% of the budget. And 8% equaling nine tasks are over budget. Now let's say that I want this green item here to be a bit wider of a margin, not 80%, but 50%. So what I'll do is say, well, I want this to show 50%. And that's going to expand that bar to be reflecting probably more tasks that are over 50% of budget. There's now 30 of them. So this is allowing me to see a quick graphical summary of how my tasks are doing on my budget. And again, if I want to see the 30 tasks that are over 50% of their budget, I would select this, and it's going to navigate me to a list of those tasks. Thanks, Emma, for mentioning that. And, and I do recommend you to know, play around with the customized dashboards because there's a lot of other things that you can do there. Uh, there's a lot of neat and cool graphics that you can see um, that'll you know, give you information that you may not be aware of. So please do you know, go in there and customize dashboards. And you know, depending on the amount of screen real estate you give to a uh, certain panel, it's going to show you different things. So uh, I do recommend playing around with that. Thank you, Mark, and I hope that wasn't too much of a curveball there. And just as a little follow-up question from Lindsay, asking if that 50% setting will be what appears always now, and it will be. So on Mark's dashboard, it would be 50% on that particular tile every time he logs in until he goes and changes that. That is correct. So it's always going to be that way. But for other users, it's going to still be 80. So it's just for me. Yeah, which I kind of like that, you know, people can see what they need to see on their dashboards because other, you know, everyone's a little bit different with what they need to see. But hopefully that answered the question. And again, thanks, Mark, that had just come up from a couple of people. And I wanted to make sure we addressed it while we had everyone on the line here. Um, sure. Excellent. Well, Mark, was, that sounds like everything you wanted to go through and we're really great on time. So I think that was perfect. Um, should we leave the session open for probably another 10 minutes or so? And people are welcome to type in questions. Uh, as we go and then we'll post the recording hopefully tomorrow if people need it. Sounds good to me. Okay well thank you again Mark. Um, so we don't have one next week. We're going to be taking a little uh, hiatus for a little while here but the next series we'll certainly be announcing once we figure it out. I think there's something coming up in September series wise that our marketing team will certainly be promoting and we welcome everyone to sign up for that. Um, suggestions are welcome. Uh, Mark and I are often the ones brainstorming what uh, what kinds of things we should go through. So if anyone listening today has ideas of what they'd like to see a webinar on, what they'd like to see Mark go through, um, please just drop us a line and let us know. You can reach both Mark and I just through our first name at functionpoint.com. So feel free to drop either of us a line with webinar ideas. Um, and thank you again, Mark. That was really, really informative. You you present really well. So it's, it's really great to listen to you go through this stuff for us all. No problem. Thanks so much. And a few other things to mention. Um, social media us, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, connect with us on LinkedIn, uh, do whatever people do with Google+. Plus. I have no idea. I've never really looked at that thing, but go Google+. Plus. I'm sure that you guys will, um, you and Bing, you know, it's a team working together. Um, but, uh, and yeah, one other thing, uh, as I said, please do send us the suggestions for the webinars. I think that we're going to look at some workflow stuff, like some different retainer workflows. I'm not sure. You know, maybe I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> oh, <sure>. Mark, geez, <laughs> you're letting the cats out of bags here. I'm not even sure if we're going to do that. but <laughs> We are now. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we have to because oh, retainer geez. seems to be the topic of the month. So, Isn't it uh, just, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so send us any suggestions you have. Okay, perfect. Well, I'll stop the recording, but we'll stay open. I see some other questions coming in, so we'll answer those shortly. And, uh, yeah, thanks again, everyone, and especially to you, Mark. No problem. Have a good day, everyone. Take care.